Hey guys, it's Ashley, and today I'm going to be giving you some recommendations if you are a first-time fantasy reader and you have no idea where to start. Back when I first started reading fantasy, it was around the time when the Heroes of Olympus were still being published, when the Immortal Instruments were like in its heyday, and those were the books that were super popular, so those were the ones that I turned to. There's still great books to start out with, don't get me wrong, but I think that now there are so many more wonderful stories from different authors of color and, you know, based on different cultures that I think would be a great place to start as well. So I have a list here of some that you will recognize as your like, you know, basic fantasy series that have been popular for a very long time, and others that I've really enjoyed that I think you will too that fall under those different categories. But before we get started, I want to give a huge thank you to today's video sponsor, Book of the Month. So Book of the Month is a super popular and fast-growing online book service for readers, and their mission is to promote new and emerging authors to help readers find new books that they love. Each month, their team vets hundreds of books to give their readers a curated selection for that month that they can choose from. And that selection ranges from new and early release titles, as well as repeat authors that they know their readers love. But the best thing about Book of the Month is that they are risk-free, meaning if you don't see a book that you want that month, you can skip it, no worries, no charge. And then my second favorite thing about Book of the Month is that they have the best price for new release hardcover fiction. So if you want to try out Book of the Month, you can get your first book and your first month for just $9.99 with my code Dash of Ash. I'll also have a link in the description down below that you guys can click on if you want to see more about the choices for this month, but for now, let's go ahead and go through them real quick. So first up, we have The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood, which is a rom-com about a couple playing pretend. Can we say fake dating anybody? Then we have Beautiful Country by Chen Julie Wang, a memoir about growing up in New York City's Chinatown. The Neighbor's Secret by L. Allison Heller, a suburban story full of juicy secrets, clearly. <laughs> then we have The Sweetest Remedy by Jane Egero, which is the story of a girl who meets the family that she never knew in Nigeria after her father dies. And then we have Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney, which is a twisty tale about an anniversary trip gone wrong. So those are the five books that Book of the Month has chosen for September, and these are the five that you can choose from this month. So if any of these sound interesting to you and you want to learn more about their awesome service, go ahead and check out the link in my description down below, and remember to use my code Dash of Ash to get your first book and month for just $9.99. Thank you so much once again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video and supporting me and my work. And now without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. So there are so many places that you can start as a new fantasy reader, like so many places. The world of fantasy writing has widely opened since, you know, the 10 years ago it was that I started reading it. So there are just so many places that you can start. And this list that I'm going to show you is by far like just a tiny pinprick in the entire world of fantasy reading. Also, before we get into it really quick, all of these are pretty much YA fantasy except for one, which is middle grade. So if you're looking for more adult fantasy, then I would probably look elsewhere. But some of these that are YA really deal with very hard topics, very dark things that you can find also in adult fantasy books. So I definitely wouldn't like you know, just shove these off because they're YA. Like, these are really good books. So anyway, one of the first books that I would start with if you're just getting started is one that I feel like everybody tells you to read when you're just starting out with fantasy because it's just kind of like a staple in the book fantasy writing world, but that's gonna be Graceling by Kristen Kishore. This is a great story to start out with because the magic system is really not complicated at all. Essentially, the people in this world who have magic are called Gracelings, and they are easily found out by their eyes being different colors. And a Graceling can have a grace, which means that they are just very good at doing certain things. So if somebody has a cooking grace or a dancing grace, they are really skilled at that particular, like, thing. But this gets more into like fantasy when people are like, oh, I have a sword fighting grace, or I'm trying to think of something more specific. I, I can like read minds or I can, you know, uh, do other things that you wouldn't normally do because I have this grace that lets me do it, you know? Um, so it's not all just like basic, like I can cook really well. It gets really interesting. And in this story, the very first initial scene that we get following our main character, Katza, it just really sets the scene for the story. It really sets, you know, exactly what 
this story is going to be dealing with, and it also gives you a really good insight into her as a character. Some people might be intimidated as first-time fantasy readers because it is a relatively long book. Like, it does end up becoming almost 500 pages for, like, a first book, but I just, it's so good. It's really such a good story, and I just really, really recommend reading it. I don't recommend moving on to the second book called Fire because it doesn't follow any of these characters, and also, personally, to me, was just not a really good book, but um, to each their own, if you decide you want to move on because you like Kristen Kishore's writing, then go for it. But don't say I didn't tell you that I didn't like it. <laughs> so let's talk about one of my favorite books from last year, which was A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. When I was talking earlier about how the world of fantasy has opened up so much more, this book is one of the ones that I was thinking about in particular. Song of Wraiths and Ruin is described as a West African inspired fantasy, meaning that the world building and the world that we're living in is heavily inspired by that sort of culture of that region. So not only is it extremely immersive, but you are like learning so much as as you're reading this story and you're enjoying it and you're, you know, flowing along with the tension and the fast pacing and all of that kind of thing. It is such a wonderful story and it's even got a really good romance in it too. It's kind of like an enemies to lovers sort of story which always keeps tensions high and always makes you want to keep reading more. Essentially we follow this boy and this girl during this sort of festival over this week and they both want to kill each other without the other knowing. But when they meet, things don't go exactly according to plan. So it's a really, really great story filled with so much wonderful world building and the magic is so interesting and I just highly recommend. If you're getting started on fantasy, this is definitely one that you should look into picking up. If high fantasy is sometimes confusing for you, meaning like, you know, you're jumping into this entire new world that's made up and you're having to learn every little piece and tidbit of it and it's hard to keep up with, just take it slow. It's really not that confusing or complicated and I feel like the relationships between the characters and the romance and the, you know, tension will really keep you wanting to read. But yeah, such a good book. And this is her debut. And the second one is coming out really, really, really soon. So this would be a great time to hop into this so that you could get to the second one really easily and very quickly without having to wait a full year and a half like I did. I wish I didn't have to do that, but here we are. We're gonna go back to another basic YA fantasy that I feel like everybody recommends in one of these videos, but for me, I really recommend this story because I just really enjoy it, even though some other people don't, um, but that book is gonna be Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. I feel like there have been so many strides made in YA fantasy recently, but for me personally, I can't go about talking how I got into YA fantasy without mentioning Sarah J Maas because her books were really some of the like cornerstones of my channel when I was first starting and some of the high fantasy that I really delved into and really loved and so I just have to mention it and I have to recommend it because I really really enjoy this story. Selena as a character she's very polarizing in some ways but in others you can really root for her it's kind of confusing, but uh, it's true. Some people really like her as a main character, like I do, and some people absolutely cannot stand her because she's annoying and pompous and arrogant and gets on everybody's nerves, which I also understand. But I feel like her journey throughout the first book toward, you know, the latter books is just... It's so good. It's so good and I was totally not expecting it and all of the other characters as well. I love them and I don't... the books just get so much better and so much more fast-paced and you know, just so much more like like war. War is happening. Yes, this is a very large fantasy series. This story does consist of like seven or eight books. Um, there is a particular way that you should read them, meaning you should read the first three books and then read the prequel novellas and then read the last four books, I think. And you should do so in chronological order obviously. But once you start getting into the story and you start realizing what has been happening in the background and what these characters are going to have to deal with and face in the future books, it just becomes like a whirlwind ride. If you've never heard of this book in your life and you have no idea what it's about, essentially we follow this girl named Selena Sardathian who has been a slave for a year and is released from prison only to join this uh, tournament to become the king's champion. Um, she's an assassin and so she has to basically beat out all of these other criminals and thugs and thieves and uh, mercenaries and things in order to become the king's personal assassin? I don't know what other way of putting it. Then we have one of my all-time favorite books, 
of all time, my all-time favorite series. I absolutely love this thing to death. I just, I, hmm, I don't know why I didn't read this sooner. And that book series is the Ark of a Scythe series, or just the first book, Scythe, by Neil Shusterman. If you guys were around last year when I read this series, I was obsessed with it. Oh my god, it literally took over my life. The series was so unexpected for me, but I absolutely fell in love with it. I am obsessed. <laughs> Did I mention that already? I'm obsessed. If you're unaware or have not heard me rant and rave about the series yet, essentially the Scythe series is more of a utopian style fantasy, meaning we sort of follow a world that is perfect, but obviously you know that it's not going to remain perfect or you know, nothing can be absolutely perfect. So you start finding these little problems with the world and things start kind of crumbling around when people start picking at those problems, you know? But essentially it's kind of like a utopian fantasy. Uh, we are in our world, but it's a different version of our world. So in a way you could also call it dystopian. But in this world that we follow, we have essentially conquered death, meaning that people don't just die from random things, you know? We can cure all illnesses. If somebody dies, we can bring them back. But in order to keep the size of the population under control, we have created the Scythedom. And so the Scythes are the only one who are tasked with killing. They're supposed to be absolutely objective. They're not supposed to have any biases, but obviously this is not the case. Otherwise we wouldn't have this series where we have problems and the world starts crumbling around them. Um, but in this series, we basically follow Citra and Rowan, who are these two kids who get to be apprentices to a scythe, though neither really want to be an apprentice. Nobody wants the job. And so you follow them as they are pushed to their limits, they learn how to be scythes, and they start picking at these problems in this perfect world, and you start uncovering the actual injustice and problems with with all of it. It's genuinely one of my favorite series of all time. I cannot rave about it more, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. You guys can choose if you want to pick it up, but for somebody who's just beginning fantasy, I would say this is this is a really good place to start because it's not exactly high fantasy. Like, you're still learning about how we have, you know, created this new sort of world and um, how we've gotten to this point, and, you know, things aren't the same in our world as they are in this book, but it's enough closely related to our world and to the modern day that like you won't be very confused all the time. So I just have, I would highly recommend, so just highly recommend. <laughs> now another really good fantasy series is Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. This is another one of those stories that I was talking about earlier that sort of branches off from what you usually think about as fantasy. Yes, it's still high fantasy, but we have so many different cultural influences that it really takes on an identity of its own. And I seriously love this story. We basically follow this girl named Maya who wants to be the imperial tailor to the emperor. So she wants to be the emperor's personal tailor. But the problem with that is that only men can have the job. So when the emperor's men start knocking on her father's door and being like, hey, you're a very famous tailor. You need to come and compete in this competition to become the new imperial tailor. And her dad is too sick to go. Maya disguises herself as her brother in order to compete so as not to bring shame to her family. But along the way, she ends up being tasked with having to sew these three gowns of the gods, right? And so she's armed with this impossible task and she has to travel across the country in order to figure out how to do these things. I think that it was a great story. I think that the second book was very very fast-paced and just keeps you moving constantly so I think that's a really good thing about the story as well. I really like Maya as a character and although the romance in this story did take a little bit to grow on me, it did grow on me and I do enjoy it now. So um, I think that the story is just really fun. It's really cool and I really like the aspect of involving a lot of sewing and um, tailoring into a fantasy story because I haven't seen that before. Um, sewing and tailoring makes up a large part of um, why she can do some of the things that she can and how she does them and I just really like that. And so if you want something a bit more wacky and zany and something that is a bit more out of the comfort zone than the books that I'm showing you right now, then I would highly, highly, highly recommend picking up Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. This is sort of a Alice in Wonderland-esque high fantasy in a way, but it's also a middle grade series. So with middle grade, it's much easier to understand and to pick up um, because it's meant for 
children. But that doesn't mean that it's not as good. It's still so good. There are so many things in this story that I was not expecting. So much of like a whirlwind journey. You know, this book series is supposed to be long and have so many things happen. And I'm so, so, so excited for the upcoming books because the first three books have already been released. The sort of first arc of the series has finished and then when going into book four that should be coming out hopefully soon um we'll start a whole new journey in this story so i think now is a great time to pick up this series if you are interested and if you're looking for something that's just really fun really quirky and totally different from your usual ya fantasy the story is essentially about this girl named morrigan crow who is the unluckiest girl in the world because she was born on the unluckiest day of the year and so unlucky children like that who are called cursed children and up actually dying on their 11th or 12th birthday I believe it is and so on that day when she is supposed to die um, this man called Jupiter North comes in and whisks her off to Nevermore. Nevermore is this crazy wacky world that I've already you know talked a little bit about um, and she ends up having to compete in this competition to uh, become a member of the Wondrous Society which is this thing in this new wacky world um, in order to stay here so that she doesn't have to go back and essentially die. But more than this just being like a fun, you know, wacky story with all of these, you know, interesting characters and, you know, crazy things that happen in this world, this story is really about a girl finding, you know, friends and finding a home that she feels like she belongs in. And um, even the second and the third books where she, you know, has to deal with unimaginable things, um, it's really just about her finding who she is and being okay with it. And I just love it so much. I love it. Really this series if you haven't. I just cannot recommend it enough. Now the last two books that I have to share with you are ones that I think are just like a bit more advanced than these stories that I already shared. Um, they're the ones that I would say that if you like feel pretty comfortable in the fantasy genre and you're like yeah I want to you know try something new. I want to try something a bit more you know dense in a way um, then I would recommend these two books right here. The first one that I have is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. These books are also very large but they are so 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 good. It's basically a high fantasy story based off of the Roman Empire. Um, it's very dark at times, very violent, um, and the world building is, uh, it's not too much to handle, but it is, I would feel like, a bit more than some of the other ones that I've already shared. And I also think just because of some of the themes in this story, it is a bit more, I'm not gonna say advanced, but just like, like, I would say feel comfortable in the fantasy genre and some of the themes that they explore in those books before you pick up this one because if you're not used to like blood and gore and torture then I wouldn't read this one just yet. But in the story we follow this girl named Laia whose brother is arrested for treason and she goes to the rebels for help. They basically say oh we need you to be a spy and so she goes into the martial empire right which is the like the harsh government of this world and she poses as a slave in order to you know spy on what they're doing. On top of that we follow this boy named Elias who is attending the school at the Martial Empire or where Laia is going undercover as um, and he is training to become a mask I can't remember what they're called, but basically like the elite soldiers of this world. And we kind of have this like enemies to lovers romance almost in a way. And we kind of have a million other things that happen, including all of the blood and gore and violence and torture that I've already talked about. So there's just, there's something about this story that I absolutely love, even though I have yet to be able to finish the entire thing, which still makes me mad. But it's just, it's such a good series. It's really, really a good series. So I would just highly recommend if you're looking for something, you know, the next level up, definitely pick up the series. It's so, so good. And then finally, we have what is probably another staple in everybody's, you know, beginner guide to fantasy videos that they make. Um, but I have to mention it because it's just, an incredible series. It's one of my favorites of all time and it is a sort of borderline YA adult I would say but it's definitely for people who um, have already sort of dipped their toes into fantasy and feel pretty comfortable with high fantasy and are able to kind of like soak up a lot of information because this book will give you a lot of information about this world. But the story that I'm talking about is the Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. Again, like I said, I feel like this is such a staple in fantasy reading, especially in, you know, YA reading because I, this book is possibly classed as that, but I've always considered it towing the line between young adult and adult because again, it deals with a lot more deeper 
sometimes darker themes, a lot more heavier things, and a lot more detailed. Like, this world is so detailed and the magic system is, you know, completely different from anything that, you know, you've ever read before and there's just so much that goes on in this story and it's it's just, it's so good. If you can get into it and understand what's going on and you just fly through it, even though it's, it's big, it's a lot, you just really fly through it. It's so good. The story is essentially about this girl named Vin who is a street urchin. She's been, you know, hiding with this thieving crew and she knows she can do some kind of of magic but she hides it because she's not supposed to be able to do it and then in walks this guy named Kelsier who rescues her from this crew and has her join his own crew in which they are planning to basically overthrow the entire empire it's somewhat of a heist book and it's somewhat of a found family story in a way and it's just so good all around so 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 good so those are the books that i would recommend if you guys are starting out in fantasy you don't know where to start or maybe you've already read a couple things and you want some more recommendations there you go i've absolutely enjoyed every single one of these books that i have mentioned and i would just highly recommend reading them read them all so you can understand exactly why I love them so much. If you guys have a fantasy book or series that you think is really great for beginners or you just really love in general, definitely leave your recommendation down below so that other people can read through and get even more ideas. But otherwise, I think that's going to be it for this video. So if you wanna follow me on any of my socials, all my handles are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, you guys, and I will catch you later. Bye.